Your desire feels good to you. Doesn't torture you. That's a really good thing. That says so much because when you desire something and you believe it, then you are in that eager, optimistic, good feeling place. If you desire something that you don't believe, then it doesn't feel so good, does it? And so, so many people sift through life trying to settle for the believable. And then they just get all resistant because their life keeps producing within them it's the nature of what this time space reality is about. It keeps producing within you new, fresh desires. That's what the expansion of you is. It's what the evolution of all species is. So when the new desire happens and it does all day, every day, you got to figure out how to keep up to speed with it. You have to figure out how to give more attention to your desire than to the current reality that is causing you to doubt it. Because whatever you give your attention to is activated within you. You are vibrational. Most don't really know that you're so good at translating vibration, but you are vibrational beings. And what you give your attention to is vibrational in nature also. And then law of attraction puts those things together. So if you are facing reality, there's some situation and it's happening often in your life experience. It's a sort of theme. The reason that it is, is because you keep looking at the theme, talking about it, thinking about it, worrying about it. Now the worrying is the emotion that comes when you think about something you don't want. So when we say you worry about it or you doubt it, what we're saying is you focus on something that is contrary to what you want and to who you really are. So we want to help you to sort that out. We want you first and foremost to understand that you are the creator of your own reality and you do it through your focus. We want you next to understand that you have much more ability to focus than you have been applying. Next, we want you to understand that the reason that you don't apply your focus in the way that you could is because you're confused. And we want you to understand that the reason you're confused is because in most cases you've lost sight of your own guidance system. So you're listening to this one and this one and this one and this one, and you're using lots of different criteria to help you make decisions. But in many cases, and we say this to you, especially if things aren't going the way you want them to, but it's true of everybody. You don't always, hardly ever, you don't, you don't, you don't often, hardly ever, you don't. You don't allow yourself to follow your path of least resistance. And what we really mean by that is you are so much more than you see in these physical bodies. You are source energy. You are an extension of this source energy. There is a momentum about you that when you tap into it, you will begin to understand what you meant to do, how you meant to feel when you decided and you did to come into this physical body. There is a momentum that serve you so, serves you so well. And that momentum has carved out a path. It's a path of no resistance, save for the resistance that you throw on your own path. So we want to talk today about anything that matters to you, but we want to show you it is our powerful desire that when you leave this gathering, that you understand what the path of least resistance means and how to figure out how to get on it. For some people, when they hear the words path of least resistance, they think it means, oh, you want me to be lazy. You want me to do what's easiest for me. And we say, exactly. <laughs> and then you say, but wait, I've been trained not to be that way. I've been trained to, to, knuckle under. I've been trained to give it all I've got. I've been trained to push through. I've been trained to persevere. I've been trained that, that if there isn't pain, there isn't gain. And we say, how's that working out? For you? <laughs> it's wearing you out. It makes you tired. It makes you ornery. It makes you not nice to be with. 
this virtue that you're you're working so hard to accomplish, there's an easier way. An easier way because it has more momentum. It's the path of least resistance. And by that we mean it's the path of who you really are. It's the path of your true desire. So in order to figure out this path, first you have to accept. We're going to throw it at you. You can't accept it at first, but by the end of the day, we think we will have worn you down. <laughs> Everyone has their own path. And that's what's tricky because you, oh, we love you so much. You've got your nose on other people's paths. <laughs> you care too much. And, and the reason you do is because you've been using criteria other than your own guidance system to understand what your path is. So you look among you and you decide what's wrong activity, what's right activity, what's good behavior, what's bad behavior. You try to sort it out in an action oriented out here on the edge of manifestation place. And we want to say to you, that's the hard way of going about it. And it's way too long in the process. What we want you to come to understand today is that you've got guidance and we're going to explain to you exactly what it is and how you've got it. You've got guidance that knows the path to everything you want. Hear this, your inner being, whatever you want to call that source energy part of you knows where you stand right now in relationship to everything you want and knows the path to it. And the reason we call it the path of least resistance is because we keep showing you the path that is most likely from where you are that you can see it. Did you sort of get how good those words were? In other words, once you get tuned in, once you start loving yourself, once you're meditating and feel good, once life is really feeling good to you, once you're waking up and knowing it all as well, once you're looking around the world and seeing the beautiful things of it, you have almost no resistance in your path. So we can offer just a clear understanding of where something is that we know you want and you'll be in the receptive mode and you'll just hear it and you'll just follow the path to it easily, effortlessly, joyfully. But if you're all wadded up, like so many are all twirled up in the rightness and the wrongness of things, blaming this one, blaming that one, mad at yourself about this and that, making comparisons, feeling jealous, not happy with where you are, being sort of irritated about where everybody else is too. If you're kind of all wadded up in all of this watching, if you're all wadded up, if you're all wadded up in all of that, then what's happening to you is you can't find the path of no resistance because you're not a vibrational match to that. But that doesn't mean that the source within you doesn't keep showing it to you. Start again. What we want to say to you, we really want you to hear this is that sometimes the path of least resistance will give you an example. Let's say that you want enough financial resources, enough resources to do the things that you want to do. So that all sounds really nice, doesn't it? And then you think, but I don't have the money to do everything I want to do. So you just threw some resistance on your trail. Now you would argue with us. Yeah, because I faced reality, Abraham. I'm not, I'm not like you. I can't just pretend that it's other than it is. And we say, we're not pretending. We know, we know there's just no resistance on our trail. Like there sometimes is on yours. So you've got some resistance. You want money, but you believe that you're going to have to work for it. So there's some resistance in that. And not only that, you also believe that you have to do this job that you don't want to do. So now here's just follow with us just a little bit, because once you get this, as we give it to you in the beginning of this day, then everything else that we say will be easier for you to hear. And you're going to leave here with so much less resistance than you've ever experienced before. Things will begin flowing to you much more easily. You're going to like it. So you want money. That seems like the path of least resistance because you could trade chickens and furniture. <laughs> you could trade services, but it is not portable. 
It's not convenient. So you've decided that you want some dollars. That's the path of least resistance. And then you think, but I have to go to work. So there's resistance in that. Now we want to ask you, you can sort this out, which is the path of least resistance to go to work and get some dollars or to not go to work and not have any dollars. So in that sort of clear scenario, the path of least resistance is easy to understand, isn't it? So let's say you follow the path of least resistance because you like to live well and you like to eat food and things like that. And so you follow the least, the path of least resistance and you go to work. And as you go to work, you, you receive some dollars, but then there are things about that work that you don't like. People are mean to you maybe, or they don't understand you. And as you focus upon it, you start activating resistance along your path. So now you've put yourself in a really hard place. You want to work. You don't really, but you want to work because you want money, but you don't want there to be a hard time. So now this seems like a, a hard choice. You want something that you believe that you can't have. What we want you to understand is you could smooth that path out for yourself more than you know, you could look for things at work that you do like, and you could carve out a path of lesser resistance. And the more you do that, the more law of attraction will show you other things that you like also. So your path gets easier and easier. Esther was watching a scenario in a family that she loves so much. And there were several members of the family and Esther was really contemplating this path of least resistance stuff that we keep talking about. And so Esther was watching two kids in this family squabbling with each other. And Esther thought my path of least resistance is to get the hell out of here. <laughs> she wasn't enjoying it. And then she thought, but I don't want to hurt their feelings. Now, which is the path of least resistance to hurt your feelings or to hurt their feelings? That's something that you really want to think about, isn't it? So anyway, Esther did what she usually does. She chose to hurt her own feelings. It was, it really was easier under the circumstances. She chose the path of least resistance. And then she, but then she smoothed out her path by thinking, I'm going to observe this through different eyes. I'm going to observe this through the idea of path of least resistance. So she watched this little boy antagonizing his older sister. And she thought, if I were her, my path of least resistance would be to just go to my room. But she watched. And that was not the choice that was taken. Instead, the path of more resistance was taken to sort of volley back. So now it was game on. More resistance, more words, more sort of poking, more seemingly deliberate antagonism. But now Esther is on her path of least resistance because she's found a way to be there and not be out of sorts because now she's observing something she really wants to understand. See how her path is smoothing out. So now she's watching the other paths. So now the little girl is getting more and more frustrated. Her volume is coming up. Her resentment is getting more. And now she wants to involve her mother. Her mother just stepped on to the path of more resistance. Now it seems that mother is the one that should sort this out. And Esther is thinking, mm, if I were mother, I'd go to my room.